what was that massive thing that happened yesterday? Um, despite yesterday, actually, Bitcoin not moving a whole lot yesterday. We had this happen. BlackRock has an appetite just like Sailor does. Oh, by the way, MicroStrategy has turned green. That's very positive. Uh, BlackRock's appetite for, for Bitcoin is just as big, if not bigger, than Sailor's. 875 million from one fund not in total one fund took in that much well according to this is 872 but still blackrock took in more than all the funds took in the prior day and that <laughs> That 870 was mostly made of a BlackRock itself, which took in 642 the day prior. And the day prior to that, the 480 was mostly comprised of BlackRock itself at 315. And the day before that, 402 was mostly comprised of BlackRock's of 292. And the day before that, the 188 was mostly comprised of BlackRock's 165. And the day before that, the 192 was mostly due to Black's Rock 317. Do you get do you get the picture for this whole week and last week? You just have BlackRock buying and buying and buying and basically buying everything. I mean, even on the 23rd, everyone else was selling and BlackRock was just buying alone. I mean, for them to buy 872 million yesterday on, on pretty much a non-existent day, like a no movement day. In fact, it was Bitcoin actually went down a little bit. That shows you how much, first of all, volume they're generating. And second of all, how much interest. And third, how much Larry Fink really loves Bitcoin. It really makes no sense, right? Like there's something going on. I know a lot of people always say, you know, George, you understand it's ETF, right? This is not just BlackRock themselves buying it. This is just a free market. People are buying ETFs. Tell me how it makes sense. If that's the case, why does Fidelity and ARK and Bitwise, why do you see them not have any numbers? Like these numbers make sense. 13 million or outflow of 24 million, seven, seven, four, six. On a down day, that makes sense. There should be no inflows because no one wants to buy it on a down day, right? And then you have BlackRock buying close to a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. That makes no sense other than Larry Fink and BlackRock doing some stuff, right? They buying themselves, using other funds to buy it, whatever. They're doing something. Otherwise, the numbers don't make sense. <laughs> They're doing something. They are buying for sure, right? They already hold, what is it? Four, now they hold 429,000 Bitcoin and, uh, and they're, they're closing in really fast to Binance. Really, really, really fast. And at this pace, they will surpass, they will surpass this person right here by the end of this year. Maybe that's Larry Fink's goal to surpass Satoshi and then crown himself the new Satoshi by the end of this year because that at this rate, what they're they're doing, what how fast they're accumulating, that is what's happening. I mean, it's it's just absolutely crazy uh, how much they are accumulating. That's why I think Sailor announces forty two billion goal because that's the only way he can, you know, he can catch up because otherwise there's just no way. There's no way um, he could ever catch up to BlackRock. But uh, so, yeah. That's why a lot of people actually think BlackRock's entry, maybe not a lot, but I do think I do agree. BlackRock, BlackRock's entry into crypto actually matters more than the U.S. election. If you think about it, it, makes sense. I know a lot of people are looking forward to election, and I am too, because there's a lot of new rules and regulations that may be in place that are 
that can be very favorable to crypto and it makes a lot of sense. And if the economy gets revived, obviously that's gonna help crypto overall. But if you think about it, when you have this one entity uh, that just keeps buying and buying and buying and buying and buying and buying and, buying and just like takes up all this, the supply, that is going to drive things upwards more than anything else, right? And that is exactly what's happening. And not only that, that one company is also forcing all the other companies to jump in too. If it wasn't for BlackRock's, you know, entry, I don't know if Fidelity and all these others would have joined in and created their own ETFs, right? Um, so yeah, but again, I always emphasize this, BlackRock is not our friend. BlackRock is not our buddy, okay? We don't want to let BlackRock buy up all the supply. <laughs> They're not doing us favors. We are inadvertently benefiting if they buy up all the supply because it's gonna drive prices upwards and it's gonna help us. But they're not doing that to help us. They're not doing that for the benefit of all Bitcoiners. Larry Fink and company, they have bigger agendas that does not include us. <laughs> they have some master agenda that that is not, you know, that we're not part of. So, uh, so just keep that in the back of your mind. So, you know, so benefit while you can. <laughs> Grab Bitcoin while you can. BlackRock is not our friend and probably will not do good things after a few years after they have accumulated a crazy amount of Bitcoin, and then we'll see their true intentions and what their agenda is. But right now, we will benefit from all this accumulation. It will add up. As they accumulate more and more and more, we'll benefit. So as we move forward into November and December, and the Santa rally and the new new regime takes over. And as we move into the new year with more rate cuts, with liquidity injections and everything else that's going to be happening next year. This is what it's going to probably go look like, right? Uh, this is what happened in 2020. A lot of you guys remember what 2020 was like, it was not a good year. It was a horrible year. It was a very horrible, scary year. People were sitting at home, bored, not doing anything. Not only that, people were scared to go outside. People were scared for their lives. Economies were shut down. People couldn't travel. You know, it was looking pretty rough. Um, but still, despite all that, you had Bitcoin do its thing and continue upwards and kept doing what it always have um, in the past and just, you know, just did its thing and just kept going. That in 2020, that little scam wick that went downwards, I, you know, you call it a scam wick, it really wasn't, but that was just true panic selling. That brought Bitcoin down to $3,800. $3,800 in 2020, March of 2020. I remember it vividly. It started out the day at 10,000. Then the day opened, the, the stock market crashed. I remember Dow had a negative 3,000 day and Bitcoin crashed from 10,000 down to 3,800. A lot of people, I was streaming that day too. A lot of people are like calling for 1,000 Bitcoin. It did not happen. We did a V-shaped recovery over the next few days. We cr crawled back to 10,000. And then <clears throat> after a few more grueling days or weeks, we finally <laughs> broke out after, you know, several weeks or whatever, right? We'll probably go see the same thing. So despite 
horrible, 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 horrible conditions, we still did it. This time around, we don't have horrible, 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 horrible conditions. We don't. We have actually improving conditions. So just imagine that. And we have the institutions that are ready to FOMO in Bitcoin. That's a big difference. We didn't have institutions. We didn't have BlackRock FOMOing in tens of billions and, and possibly putting hundreds of billions into Bitcoin. That, that's a big difference this time around. So I can't even imagine as we move forward in this cycle, what the differences will be. Um, I think it's going to be very different. I think it's going to be very, very, very different. 